All right, guys, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, where we now bring it all down to one final map to determine who is going to be advancing on between either Jack G or Revival. I am so excited. Claris, when you and I were like, let's do this one, we knew that this was going to be exciting. Yeah, this yeah. was going to be a close one, and oh, yeah. it is really delivering. I feel like every single game here has been pretty good. I mean, the Habitation Station one was a little bit lackluster yeah, because yeah. of how quickly that was scouted, but... Overall, this has been a fantastic series. One of the best ones today, for sure. No, you're entirely right. It's been a lot of fun to end up watching here. And Jackie, we see that GSL pin on his shirt. It was a long time ago. It mm. really was. But after we saw him get to that round of eight finish as G in GSL uh, most recently, until he moved over to do BCS Europe, I was like, wow, okay, this guy, this guy's actually back. He, he's like yeah. performing really, really well. Well, that was really his I'm back party right there. Yeah, and yeah, uh, he's continuing to have it here. Even if he goes out against Revival, he's played some fantastic games at the World Championships. Just qualifying for this event is so ridiculously hard. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so. We're going to be getting into game number five in just a little bit, and of all maps to end it on, it's Daedalus Point, which I really don't end up seeing too much TVZ on Yeah, anymore. what? <laughs> cool, okay. Uh, no, we, I haven't seen that many games here, really. This is like the map in uh, GSL, at least, where the Zergs picked this against the Protoss, yeah. and uh, I just, I'm excited for it, all right. And I, Terrans aren't in the GSL, so I guess I just don't really, you know. I guess so. <laughs> I don't get to see that, but should be fun. All hopes pitted on Maru, my friend. All hopes pitted on Maru. Of course. Uh, he is the as leader. they oftentimes are, but... Yeah. You know, there are a few other really strong Terrans in the world that have been performing. This is one of them. But Revival, as we've said before, he's rolled up the sleeves again. Uh-oh, serious time. He's gonna scout out the 11-11 racks with his sleeves all up. He's gonna be on <laughs> fire. <laughs> all right. Here we go. I hope you guys are still hype. I know it's been a long day. But you're excited for this game, right? There we go. It has been a long day, you're right. But StarCraft is pretty good. I like StarCraft. It's all right. It's a good game. It's a good game. All right, game number five to determine who is going to advance on to the round of eight. Jack and Revival, they've played a fantastic series so far, but it all comes down to this. As we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner, our Red Terran, representing my insanity. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jack And down to the bottom right, our blue Zerg, representing CM Storm. Give it up for Revival! I think he's made some fans. I hope so. Such a strong player, deserves to have lots of fans, and I uh, think he'll have more and more after this, as you say. All right. Are they cheering for Jokchi? They're cheering for Jokchi. Well, I'm cheering for Revival. I'm Gotta make it 7-0. <laughs> I'm cheering for Jackie because I predicted him, so we were at loose ends between that. We were very, very uh, separated on it. Um, obviously, I've seen a lot of Jackie being in the European scene constantly, yeah. uh, so I did think he'd bring out good games, uh, and he showed that his mech is right up there. Oh yeah, he's very good at mech, but I haven't seen him really go mech on too many maps. I don't know. I. I don't think he's gonna go mech on this map, but yeah. I suppose you could. Like, getting the fourth base doesn't look that hard if you went mech. The thing that's really good about this map for Revival, for example, is that the middle of the map, again, if he ends up taking a quick third after spotting something like this from his opponent, yeah. uh, and then feels comfortable with it, if you take that third base, you can get the creep flying so great. Mm. Because again, it's all one plane, very easy to get going. So I wouldn't be surprised if Revival did something like that. And in the middle of the map, if you're Jack G, if you're pushing out into there, there's so many angles your opponent can take it from. Sure, I, I totally see what you're saying with that. But you know what? I'm going kind of a different way on this. And yeah. normally I do want to see the macro game always. Like that's, that's kind of what I'm into. But with how wide the ramp is going up into this natural, I wouldn't mind if he went back to that game one on Alter Zeem and went for some sort of Roach Baneling. That is a huge amount of surface area to try to cover against a move like that. That's certainly true. That is so. very, very true. You've got to be careful about that here as Jack Shee. And because he's opened up in the way he has, because he doesn't uh, have any Reaper currently on the map or something like that, if he doesn't go for one or something here, then it's always going to be pretty difficult to spot something like that. Well, right now he's just going ahead and scouting with this SCV as he doesn't have a Reaper. 
not going to see anything really out of the ordinary. This is this is all pretty normal stuff. This SCV scouting with those lings coming out, unlikely he'll really be able to do much more with it. Yeah, it's it's all about getting the information later on. This SCV he pokes around, has a little <laughs> bit of look. He's going to stick around for the later information, but... Yeah, he wants to hide. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, the Zerglings run past, so it looks like this little SCV is going to be able to hide for a bit and possibly get a super important se second scout off. And this second scout, even if Revival plays a completely normal game and doesn't go for any sort of all-in or anything like that, this scout is still so important because that tells me he doesn't have to defend. Yeah, he's going to go in, have a look around. Noticeably clicks right next to the gas because he wants to see if it's still being mined. Yes. And then from that point on, feels far more comfortable. The amount of information he just gained for the cost of one SCV, it's amazing. Because when you look at it, uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. Mm. That's not a third command center. No, changing it up, man. Crazy stuff. There is a lot of options here for the aggression. Mm. Uh, especially after seeing that, again, his opponent is being like, kind of lackluster in terms of his gas income. Of course, it would be a little bit weird for him to be going full straight up to gas to have something going. But he's backing gas now, obviously, to try and get something going himself. Don't have a third base going up yet for Revival. He's grabbing that third queen, though. He's going to have to start pushing some uh, creep spread, no doubt about that. But from, from Jokji, you know, this is the type of move that if it gets scouted, can be crushed. And in fact, oh my god, he's going two base layer. Yeah, he uh, just threw down all the gas geysers, added the layer. He's got a roach warren on the way. This could be big aggression. Like, oh my god, that that is true. Getting this roach warren. This is actually very interesting what we're watching from both sides. Because it looks like Jokji would really like to hit a quick timing with more units than are expected, but Revival staying on two bases and teching up a little bit and getting that Roach Warren, that's exactly the type of build that can hold something like this. I mean, with this, when he gets like Roach speed oh. out, etc. <gasps> lings. Two Lings. Are they going to see those no, no, two no. extra racks? They're not going to see it. Oh, not going to see it. Really try to actually kill that, uh, that SCV off, and he still just doesn't know. And even as Funka shows us, uh, seeing that, that eBay upgrading, it doesn't seem like anything's wrong, really, right? Yeah, and there we go. He throws down the scan. He sees the, uh, the layer's done, as well as he sees the Roach Warren whirring away for the Gleary Constitution. So he pulls back with these Hellions. He's like, no, -uh, I'm not having nothing to do with this. Yeah. Well, he should sit back and yeah. make a couple bunkers. But the other interesting part is that we have the third hatchery going up, and we have a Spire going up. So this isn't like a really super full committal like we saw in game number one on Alter Zeme. He's getting ready for some more economy. He hasn't made a Bandling Nest either. It's a scare tactic. It's, huh, it's a something like that. A, like almost to, to a certain extent, a scare tactic mm. here. I mean, Jackshi, he would not normally be in this position with his Hellions. He would not normally be adding on another bunker at that wall. So this is really kind of messed with uh, the position that we're seeing here from Jackshi, who just doesn't want to move out. You know, the, the funny thing is, after these couple of builds that they're trying to kind of catch each other off guard with, I wonder if this game isn't just going to stabilize. Like, there's going to be yeah. maybe one iffy part coming up, but it feels like something that definitely could just kind of slow down where neither of them really do too much, and then it kind of goes into macro. Yeah, I get you. It's like both of them do this committal so that their economies, they have been hit a little bit by this, but now Jack actually sees that it's only four roaches at the front. He's like, oh, okay then. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Revival had to commit a bit more of economy to that as well to be able to actually push that out. Well, actually, right at this exact moment, I'm suddenly thinking with these seven mutas being made, I feel like this this is going a little bit in the favor of Jokji. Uh, these seven mutas, they're not really going to do that much. There's Widow Mines out, there's Medivacs on the way, there's a decent amount of Marines. There's, uh, just simply put, more units for Jokji than what's expected still from Revival. Gonna need to do a whole lot of dancing, my friend. A whole lot of dancing. Yeah, like this, a little group of speed roaches and a little group of mutas isn't gonna do anything at all against this army. I, I'm really feeling this is gonna go Jackie's way. Yeah, it's right now the the creep spread isn't as aggressive as it has been before, but because again it's one flat plane, it's almost breaching the middle of the map. But Jackie's right on out of there. He realizes now, oh, okay, I'm calling your bluff. I don't think you're doing anything with those roaches anymore. But the mutas flying as he's not home, and there's right. no missile turrets. 
there. This is a really important moment. This is almost like a base trade type of scenario. These roaches trying to pick up what they can. It looks like Jagchi wasn't looking for a moment, so some of it gets picked oh. off, but he will kill a lot of these roaches. Yeah, 10 more roaches on the way. This is going to be a big, big deal, as he just didn't have any lings or banelings to deter these units from coming onto creep. You don't have to worry about roaches on creep when you've got this big bio force pushing on forwards. He's going to trade off against this. Jagchi uh -oh. is technically down in supply, though. He is technically down in supply, but he's killing off so many of these roaches. He's getting this third base. The Mutas are doing a lot of good work over in the main base of Jokchi, killing off a lot of SCVs. And in fact, well, he lifts up these units, but just to go to the main. Yeah, totally exploit the immobility of those roaches between these two locations. Fantastic move there by Jokchi. And meanwhile, the Mutalisks were pushed away. There was only seven of them. So eventually those reinforcements would be able to handle that kind of pressure. But he has to be careful on the uh, retreat out with those medevacs. Oh, indeed. He's going to because there's not that many Marines in here. He's actually going to be able to kill both these off, and this is a huge move oh, for Revival. He just boosted out and then right into the path of these Mutalists. Oh. A great trade there for Revival to really kick things off here. And look how close the unit's loss tab is. And in fact, even for workers, they both killed 13 workers for their opponent. One important thing to notice, though, is that that hatchery was taken down, and yeah. that's always a huge blow to Zerg. It's like you can long distance by a member. It's not really as effective. Mm. You don't want to be doing that anytime soon. Right now, Jackshi is set up uh, to try and greet this. It's it's kind of normalizing out one again, but I would mm. give the... That was a nice trade there for Revival at the it, end. It was. The one thing I'm worried about, we have 1-1 one, one done for Jackshi. No upgrades right now for Revival. So that's going to make it hard once again. These bio units are going to be very effective. But you know what? He's getting a little bit aggressive. He's kind of doing that containment strategy that he was trying for before. Just trying to keep Jokchi back in his base for now. Well, for now, we have the armory being added on so that he can get those two to really flourishing mm. out here for Jackchi. And we only have Revival now really starting all of those upgrades, getting the real meat of those going. And he is denying this third base once again. So that's that's a cool move. But during all of that, it's important to note that Jackchi never pushed the creep back. So yeah, it true. still keeps going and it will give him a good map presence. Yeah, but if we take a look at the drone versus SCV count, it's 56 SCVs to 46 drones at the Ooh. moment. And he has the three command centers, so he's dropping a lot of meals. This economy, plus the four upgrades for Revival, I still feel like it's it's definitely Jokchi favored, but again, the, it's not like he can just move out and kill him right this second. We've seen crazier things today, let's face yeah. it. Yeah, no, this is... This definitely still could go either way. Yeah, definitely. Well, he has a strong army here, though. He still has a strong army. Once that 2-2 finishes, it's really going to pack yeah. a punch. But he's using this to try and establish a base. He doesn't want to risk everything on some crazy movement out into the middle of the map, because he just could get swarmed for all he knows. So he's got to be careful still. Well, we do have these mutas coming up, trying to get some harassment done. Gonna get a little bit done right now. In the meantime, we do have some drones being added, but mostly units being made by Revival, and that's kind of important. I feel like if he really wants to be back in this game, he has to kill one Terran army pretty darn well. He yes. can't be going like even against the Terran army. He has to kill one off. There's three Widow Mines at that natural that are really scaring me. Uh, if he tries to poke in there once again, if he says, oh, it's just missile turrets, great. Oh, God, you're right. Oh, oh, he moved them. Oh, that's a little bit of a shame. But he was coming in with an Overseer anyway, so he should have been able to control against that. Yeah, if he was paying close attention, shouldn't have worked out. But uh, a good try by Jokchi. Something like that can suddenly just win you the game sometimes. Yeah, if your opponent takes their eyes away for a split second, then they come back and like, hey, where's my mute? It's gone. Mm. It's not good. It's really not good. <laughs> Uh, so he's setting up a few links off this left-hand side with Banelings actually to roll into those mineral lines. That Marine is not going to see them just yet, though. Ooh, if he actually sneaks those in and kills a decent amount of uh, SCVs, that's pretty nice, especially yeah. considering Jokchi's up a little bit in supply. Uh, but still, as you said, Claris, this 2-2 is going to finish up, and the army of Jokchi is just getting scarier and scarier. And they will end up rolling on in. Will they be able to get a whole lot? Uh, a few units, a few, uh, a few workers, not too bad. Very quick reaction time here from Jokchi. Yeah. Definitely hats off to him for that, but at least Revival's taking a fourth base. Uh, it's not maybe as quick as he would like, but he's trying to stay alive during all this as well. 2-2 two, two halfway in progress, whilst we have plus three weapons and no doubt plus three armor starting up very, very soon here for Jokchi, who is looking to just propel himself forwards once again with this bio play and mm. you know he's not going to spot this drop over on the left hand side he will spot it eventually down in the bottom corner uh, but up until that point it's not going to seem all well, right now we do have a revival moving up towards that third base in the same time a little scan on the creep by jockchi 
trying to move back some of the creep. He's got to get rid of it. It's actually uh, becoming an overgrowth. This, he has to deal with that eventually. It's yeah. You know, one thing that's really scaring me right now, Claris, is the fact that we have like 12 or 13 Widow Mines out right now. Ooh. That is a lot of Widow Mines to deal with with this type of composition. But luckily, he still has some Roaches mixed in here, so that could end up helping out. Yeah. Um, Revival's just going to be looking for the most pristine engagement he can get, trying to surround in these mm. big open areas in the middle of the map. Anything else for him is not going to cut it. It's just not going to cut it against that many Widow Mines that will have Drilling Claws pretty soon, so can keep like leapfrogging forwards mm. and positioning themselves so, so quickly. But you know what? This engagement that may be occurring Occurring pretty soon. Tutu's gonna finish up in just a second, so that's gonna help out quite a bit. Tutu not quite finish yet, but the Banelings rolling in, and oh, a few good connections at least. That bio at the front was already split up to greet those before they even came into the fight, and none of the Widow Mines were expended during that, so Revival's gonna have to be a little bit careful still. That's right, especially as he spreads these mines so well right now. You can't chase this army down, and that's really what his army's meant for. And no! oh, it was a nice pickoff, but that hit was good as well. It was. They will recover quite a bit of health quite quickly, though. And then with that, now a few more Banelings added into the mix as well as the Zerglings. But there's always going to be reinforcing Marines. And as time goes on, plus three weapons is getting closer. That's going to shred up these units so, so quickly against uh, 28 Mutalisks. They really need to do a lot. They certainly do, but you know what? Jackchi might be getting himself into a corner here. If there's no good Widowmine connections, this is definitely an army that could be crushed. It's all on his marine control, as well as those Widowmines slowly moving forwards, leapfrogging forwards, as oh. we were mentioning before. This is slowly getting a big, big hindrance here for Revival, who his fourth base is getting close to it. He is getting close to it. There is a timer above Revival's head, and he absolutely has to deny this from doing anything. Uh, yeah, and you know what? I think he might be able to. He's got these mutas in the middle. He might be able to kill off some of these reinforcements, oh. and that would be pretty nice. Very nice. Just before those widow mines could actually burrow on down. Very difficult for them to do that at that point. Well, it looks like he is going to be able to join up, unfortunately. And with a Thor going in there, the Mutalist Mike are going to be hard. But here he goes. He's rolling in from the side with Bailing starting to split them up. Oh, some very good connections from the, those uh, widow mines. And it looks like Jokchi is is holding him off for now. Yeah, there's too many Marines left there. They, the Banelings need to connect. Oh, they get a few of those Marauders as well as the Marines on the way out. That's long of those Banelings on the back trying to hunt this down. And Revival Ooh. will end up pushing this back in the end. Really well done there by Revival. Does push this back, keeps his fourth base, but Jock G in the meantime has taken his fourth base as well. Absolutely, has to get that up and running if he's gonna try and make those trades over at that side of the map. He needs to keep his economy alive. He's pulling off fours, uh, sorry, he's pulling off uh, the SCVs to try and repair up everything. He knows that every unit is vital because this counterattack has so much oh. potency behind it. Look at this, he's going after this. A lot of SCVs in here. The Banley's gonna come in, but Marine's coming in for a flank. A lot of things died below on the ground there, but the expansion goes down in the skies. There's links and banelings chasing all of this off. And whilst that's happening, the mutants decide to hop into the main. Where are you going to oh. be able to get all the units in there? This is a great move right now, especially considering there's 30 mutants out right now with plus two attack. They're going to be able to kill off quite oh. a bit. But he does bring in a Thor. He has to actually, he had to pick up everything and shuttle it all the way back in there. We'll push this away for now, but Revival with the denial of that fourth base down to the bottom left, that's a good position. You know what? He has retained his four bases. He's denied the fourth of Jokchi. Jokchi's main and natural are mined out. This leaves him on one mining base. If Revival can hold on a bit longer, make a few more units, what is Jokchi to do? His next move out? has to work. 70 workers to 42. At every avenue, Revival is going to be crushing him on economy. He's going to kill off this small portion of the army. Every unit that Jaxi loses from this point on is a big, big blow. Speaking of explosions, yeah, he does catch some of those paintings, so that's not as nice as well. Well, it looks like those mutas kind of want to go in the main again, but Jokchi's defending in there. The thing uh -oh. is, the longer you defend in your main, the less time you're out on the map denying Zerg what he wants to do. Catching a lot of these SCVs oh, as man. well. He can't lose anything here if he wants to keep his hopes alive. Even these Widow Mines! Oh! oh look at this revival really pushing Jokchi back. Could he get another orbital as well? Oh, if he gets that, if he gets, he starts it burning. So he's not going to get it in the end. He needs to go off there, repair that, and make sure it's okay. But meanwhile, he will clean up another drop so effortlessly. All of those mm. Marines dying off to one or two Banelings. These mutas in the meantime, keeping units in the main base of Jokchi. He's got to be careful about that, though, being a little bit sloppy from time to time, losing a few units. 
Still, Jokji has the potential to come back, but this is looking more and more Revival favored, especially as he takes a fifth down at six o'clock. The entire weight of Jokji's army is in 51 Marines, seven Widow Mines, and then there's like one Thor, one Marauder. Not really uh, that much firepower uh, behind that if the Banelings are able to connect. Yeah. And Revival, that's what he's looking for. All he wants to do is make a load of Banelings and blow them up. He's got plenty of gas for it. Yeah, he certainly does. He has quite a few Banelings at the moment as well. He's got 48 of them along with his 24 Mutilus. So he's going to be able to do a lot of explosions with just one Marauder. That's It's going to be hard to stop this. He's really relying on his nine Widow Mines here. Realizing that this engagement is imminent, sends a few of these units to try and soak up what he can. At least the preemptive splits here with a good concave here from oh, Jaxi oh, will oh, greet oh, that. Oh! oh! Bye-bye, Banelings. That was a sick Widow Mine right there. And in oh. fact, chases down way more of the Banelings. The Mutalisks abandoned them. They abandoned them. He's trying to burrow them, but now he reveals that he has burrow tech as well. I wasn't quite watching, I don't think. Uh. He would have dropped a scan to kill that one off, I think. Well, he's got a few landmines around the map. If he catches one of those, that's still a huge deal. Looks like these Mutas want to harass a bit more. But with that many missile turrets, is this even worth it? Uh, well, he cleans through them pretty fast, man. He swept those aside with no problem. Problem. And in the end, it's up to the Widow Mines to really push that away along with the Marines. But there's still 15 Banelings on the way. There's always going to be infinite number of Banelings on the way because all he has to do is establish that base down to the bottom <laughs> whilst it's being harassed and get the gases there. Well, he's got like 3,000 gas, so I wouldn't worry too, too much yeah, about true, that, true. as you say, you know. Oh! Bye-bye, oh! Mutalists! Oh! Bye-bye! Oh my god! That is going to change <laughs> everything. He has one Mutalisk now. This army... No minerals! No minerals! Oh my god, Kolaris! Oh. Revival was so far ahead before that, but now he oh. may just lose. Oh. Okay, okay. Calm, calm. Those Banelings there weren't quite in the right position there to connect with those in the end. More Banelings going to burrow. Actually, the way those Banelings are positioned is great because the army is going to sweep around. If he, well, he knows that that base is there, is he going to pressure it? Is he oh, going to go? Man. Well, he's, he's got going. to pressure it. That's a very important base to kill off. So if he ends up getting it, that's pretty big. Got to be very, very careful. Will Jackson's he actually gonna... walk on top of it? Exactly. He always spreads himself in these engagements. So regardless of what he does, he drops a scan, kills them off anyway. Jaxi is looking good here. That's a lot of Banelings, though. He has to hold on against uh, this, those links. Oh, the gas rounds. Oh, what a split. What a split. Oh, they really don't God. do anything. Is Jaxi actually going to win this game? Oh, he drops the mule. He drops the mule. He kills off the base. He's safe. Get out, Revival! Those drones, they try and burrow on down, but all he has to do is sit there, scan and kill those off. This, I cannot believe this. Revival has thrown masses of Mutalisks down the pan, and he oh, is paying man. for it. Those Widow Mines paying off so big time. Jokchi fighting back. That is exactly what he needed. I don't think Revival can hold any longer against the four bases of Jokchi. Tries to morph in Banelings, but he only has five currently available to him. He needs more against this. He has 23 Mutalists to try and hold on against this. But the split, every every single unit here for Jokchi is positioned in such a way to make it so hard to crush anything of it. Hitting the third, hitting the natural, killing off unit after unit. Ten more Banelings of desperation here for Revival to try and hold on. But it's probably not going to be enough. He's in absolute desperation mode. He certainly is. You know, this this is, this is so painful for him. He knows that he was in a great lead this game, but you make one mistake, you make one slip up, and Jokchi's gonna get you. He clicks the fingers and those mutilists disappear. He is a magician. Jokchi able to bring them all down. These mutilists not doing too bad, catching a lot of these reinforcements to uh, just make sure that he can't rendezvous with it, but even that is a terrible trade here for Revival. No, they, nothing is a good trade at this point. He doesn't have enough to kill this off and he knows that he's just micring his heart out hoping that against all hope something can be done to yeah. stop this flow of Terran units. Something crazy, some burrowed Banelink somewhere, anything, anything he can grasp onto for his one last ditch survival effort. Oh, bye bye Mutalist once again. They are gone and Jaxi is running away with it. GG! Jaxi after an intense series is able to move on to the round of eight. Some fantastic play in this series. I think we are right. This was the series of the night for me, Kolaris. Crazy, crazy stuff. And you'd hear him. You can hear him. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jack G. 
fantastic play. Even when he was against the ropes, he fought back in multiple games to win a game that looked unwinnable there in the end. A well-deserved victory for Jack G. But likewise, we've also got to say, despite this man going out of the tournament, what a series, what a show he put on for us. Revival, he's been gone for a while, and I've got to say, congratulations to CM Storm for picking up a sick Zerg. He better have more fans after this series. He showed such amazing skill, such an amazing game. And in fact, if he hadn't lost all those mutas to the Widow Mines, I'm pretty sure he could have closed that game out as well. Yeah, I think so as well. That was that was pretty impressive. Yeah. That was pretty impressive from both sides. Yeah. What a great series. We we expected it to be so good. Yeah, and the, the Terrans doing pretty well today, Clarice. I do have to say, 100% of Terrans have gone forward. They're doing all right. All right, guys, that does it from us. Let's hear from the winner himself, advancing onto the round of eight. My insanity's Jack G. All right, I'm standing here with our winner after an epic series that I'm exhausted from watching, Jack G. So game four ends, incredibly long match. You tie up the series. You must have been exhausted. What goes through your mind before starting game five? The game was finished and I was tired. I was tired of the game. I was tired of the game. I was tired of the game. What did you think about the game? I was a little bit of a game. I was a little bit of a game. But I was a little bit of a game. 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 되게 판단을 잘 하려고 집중했고 저는 후반으로 갈수록 집중력이 좀 살아난 것 같고 상대 선수는 오히려 좀 병력도 흘리고 그래서 잘된것 같아요. So after the fourth game, um, obviously it was a really long game. He was really exhausted. But during the fifth game, he was like thinking, okay, I played against Hyun, like a tough series as well, and he just wanted to give actually. Oh wait, I forgot most of the answers. <laughs> And um, so at C Circle, he was in a similar situation against Hyun, so he just sort of was that situation and tried to make the best out of it. That was a very long answer, I'll give you credit for that. Next round, you're going up against SOS. I don't know if you know that yet. You seem to be doing really well against Protoss recently. How do you feel about that matchup? Are you confident? Jin so uh, he prefers a P, uh, TVP matchup right now, and uh, SOS definitely a really good player with a uh, tip, with a different style than other Protoss player, and he thinks if he gets uh, an upper hand in the first sets, then he should be fine to win it. All right. And what would it mean to you to win the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship? 지금 여기 우승한 무슨 의미 있는지 무슨 어 아까 오프닝 할때 관중들이 되게 많았잖아요. 근데 이런 대회가 처음이라서 그냥 이런 대회 우승하면 평생 되게 좋은 기억으로 남을 것 같아서 우승이 우승이 욕심나요. So at the opening ceremony he saw the whole the whole crowd and the, all the people and So <laughs> so at the open ceremony, he saw the he saw the crowd, he saw the people, and he thinks when he wins this kind of tournament in front of those people and in front of this like this kind of stage, then he will never forget, and it will be it, it will mean a lot for him. That's great. Once again, your winner, Jokji. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. And that is it for me. Uh, not just for tonight, but for the Intel Extreme Masters. 
World Championships in Katowice. I was actually a last minute quick special guest substitution. I didn't know I was doing this till yesterday either. Bit of a surprise, but I had a lot of fun today. So I want to thank the, the uh, Intel Extreme Masters for having me. Thank Carmack for throwing me under this big bus one day <laughs> notice. But I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much at home for tuning in. Thank you everyone here. I'm going to throw it over to the expert desk before I take my leave. Good night. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, very, very, very uh, kindly stepped in at the very last minute. So thank you very much to Jarrett, to Kyle, a.k.a. Jeremy, of course. Um, chaps, for the last time this evening, uh, that, was, that was a special match for those two. Uh, it, perhaps made even more special by the way that Jack G came back, sure, but also by the fact that Revival was absolutely worthy adversary in there, despite the fact that the community said AD 713, the majority of the mm. experts said, hadn't got a hope in hell except for, well, crazy you and Artosis, but he absolutely played his heart out, and you could see how drained he was at the end of that fifth match. One mistake like that, that is, that feeling, it, the only thing you can compare it to is just like having your heart ripped out, because you, you're in the win, you're in the lead, you're about to win, Boom, it's just gone from you. And you're thinking about the next round, maybe. Like, all right, just, yeah. let's play this out, and I'm going to go through, and then it's all gone. Yeah. And that, that must be just such a terrible feeling. Do you feel that, that um, on the fifth map, we had that point where he actually lost a load of muters to one of the Widow Mines, mm. and then he went back, like, 60 seconds later, and that wiped out. He, he went from having yeah. a 30 supply lead to being 10 back. I mean, And that lost him the game. Yeah, I mean, it was the start of the end. That was, I mean... There's so much supply in that, 30 supply. Um, that's a lot of Mewless. Uh, he lost like 15, 20 Mewless yeah. or something like that. And when you're controlling the game like that, you need those Mewless. They're the cost-efficient unit that the Zerg have at that point of the game. So losing those units, it lost in the game. And uh, Matt uh, Four, uh, Todd. OK, first of all, you use, you use chaps, not gents. So great, I did. great improvement I here. Did. Second yeah. of all, what's up, Artosis? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your daddy now? Uh, okay, okay. Todd's right, got one let, on the boards. <laughs> let's let's just calm down now. You're one and six for the day. So okay, one and six. I won the last one. It's all that matters. Okay. Oh, really? Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you won zero then against Artosis. Uh, map <laughs> four. If you kill 170 muters in a game... That game was crazy. I, I, I mean, I, I don't even understand how... If he'd lost map four, having killed 170 muters, I wouldn't have known what else to do. Uh, I think most StarCraft fans too, we, we just watched his story cup. There was a very long gameplay yeah. between Jack G and Hyun on that very <laughs> map, yeah. which ended <laughs> in a crazy way too. And that time, Jack G wasn't able, uh, wasn't able to win. That yeah. Ultra never died. And that's what I was picturing. Going to the mid game, yeah, I, I saw him go for Swamos, I was like, are you seriously doing this? After you, you've lost yeah. to Hyun, but um, the choice of the Mutas, I guess, wasn't good enough in that no. game. And Jack G, maybe he learned from that game against Xion too, definitely. Because mm. his tank placement, the way he moved around, he tricked his opponent into getting completely out of position at the end. You said it yourself. Yeah. The Queens were off creep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got cornered and... Yeah, I mean, that, that was what I was going to raise, was the fact that it... I mean, they, they, they was awful, because you could almost see it just go through his mind. He was like, oh no, the creep's finished and I can't go back. Oh, no, I, oh God, that's awful. And. But in a way, add that to what happened in the last map as well. Do you think Revival has actually lost this match rather than Jack G's won it, or would that be unfair to Jack G? I think that would be a little bit unfair. But, I mean, if you look at the whole series, then it's unfair. If you look at that last map, then yeah, I agree. Okay. Disappointing way for Revival to go out, but he has put up a fantastic show. In the end, Jack G moves on. Um, we're also going to do uh, Life's Match tomorrow now mm -hmm. at midday, which is great because we get to do the game. Uh, we're running out a little bit of time now and a little bit of light as well in here as well. Everything's starting to shut down. People are leaving. Uh, but just uh, overall for the day, uh, hopefully we've got the bracket to show you in just a moment to show you how everyone's gone through. But it highlights, here we go, look, uh, through. Just take us through that one. CJ Hero 3-2. Uh, San 3-1, no, not a massive surprise in those two matches. And seeing Hero versus San is a rematch of their uh, final earlier on in the season. Polt then going through in that controversial match with Naniwa uh, by a walkover. Deer 3-1 over Hero was probably not so much a surprise, but it was a big win for Deer. Yeah. Uh, and they'll now play each other, Polt versus Deer, in the quarterfinals. In the bottom half, we've just seen Jack G come back from behind to win 3-2. SOS also put out Oz earlier on. Thanks to Nathanius for covering that one. Uh, SOS now playing Jack G. It's a really sexy looking quarterfinal so far. And Tasia 
at the bottom of the bracket waits for Rogue yeah. or Life tomorrow. I, I, and that's the thing. It doesn't matter which ooh, one of them goes through. That is a sick it's game. It's still a sick game. Teja, but Rogue is on fire right now. He's one yeah. of the best Zergs. He's killing it in Korea and Pro League. Um, and against Teja, that's a great game. And Life is Life. So, I mean, we're only expecting great games from that yeah, game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be terrific. What was your, what was your highlight today, Todd? Uh, what sticks I, out? That, la that last series was pretty insane. Mm. Uh, Definitely not Nani versus Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm really happy about is, well, th that's about to come out wrong, but I was going to say the race distribution. In, in a way, bear with me. We've okay. had tournaments with seven Protosses in quarter and one Terran. Yes. Now we have four Protosses, three Terran, three and one Zerg. That's absolutely. That's a good start. We're headed in the right oh, no. direction here. So one Zerg will make it through for sure. I know Zerg is. Tomorrow. I mean, there's problems with Zerg right now. I mean. Only one? Come on, guys. Just one? What are you doing? Where's the balance? <laughs> <laughs> David's watching this right now. You know that, right? Yep. By the way, and the I'm sure he's thinking a lot about Swarmheart. <laughs> <laughs> the two Zergs that lost yes. came down to the last game. and They, did. they, were, they were both uh, best ahead. of fives. Yeah, yeah. That's, they were. Yeah. They were ahead. That's there could really have been point. three Zergs. Yeah, could have been three Zergs. What's up, Apollo? There could have been, but there yeah. isn't. Okay. <laughs> I think the, the highlight for me is that we started really strong with a crazy series we with did. Hero and Hyun, and we ended pretty strong too. Yep. I think that's the best part today. Okay, good stuff. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, thank you to Artosis and to Kalaris as well. Tomorrow, we'll see all four of them back again, and the man in this, well, position, not seat, will be EG's in control. And he will be in control of another man called Rhett. It will be the full team tomorrow for the last match of the round of 16, the quarterfinals as well. And then we'll move on to the semi-finals before our final day to crown our $100,000 winner-takes-all Intel Extreme Masters World Champion. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in.